Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In this course, we will be looking at the seven C's of effective communication, and you will also learn how to choose as precise or as concrete a word as possible, select words that have high sense of appropriateness for the reader, and opt for familiar words and words which are not pretentious. Basically, this means that you need to opt for words which you are familiar with, which you are comfortable with, and not use words just to show off your knowledge to the reader. You will also learn how to limit the average sentence to 17 to 20 words in a sentence and insert no more than one main idea into a sentence. Every sentence has a main idea and in this lecture we will look at how you can limit your sentence to one main idea per sentence. You will also learn how to arrange words so that the main idea occurs early in a sentence. If the main idea is coming too late in a sentence, then it becomes very difficult for the reader to understand what the sentence is about. Having the main idea come early on in the sentence makes it very clear to the reader as to what they will be facing when they co continue reading into the sentence. You also need to ask yourself, does the communication have the you attitude? Also in this lecture, we are going to talk about having someone else have a look at your statement if you have doubts about whether it is tactful or not. Another opinion may cause you to consider rechanging or uh, remaking the statement. We will also talk about being cautious in using humor in communication. Here too it pays to have someone else review your words. Using humor in your communication sometimes can be very, very effective, but you have to be very careful and therefore it is important to have someone else look at what you are what you're writing so that your humor is appropriate and tactful. You also need to be careful in using discriminatory language. This uh, means that you need to be aware of gender, race, age, color, creed or ethnic origins, especially if you are using humor. Humor should not be at the expense of anyone's race uh, or ethnicity. Um, and we will be looking at different examples on how this should be avoided. One of the main C's of communication is clarity and we are going to look at clarity in this lecture as well as we, and along with courtesy. So let us have a look first at what it means when we say clarity. Clarity means getting the meaning from your head accurately to the reader and this basically is the purpose of clarity. A lot of our thoughts are in our head, in our mind and we need to get them across clearly to the reader so that the reader is not confused about what we want to say. Remember you need to choose precise, concrete and familiar words and construct effective sentences and paragraphs in order to be um, clear. Now, in choosing concrete and precise words, clarity is achieved through a balance between precise language and familiar language. And also, when you have a choice between a long word and a short word, you need to choose the short familiar word. The golden rule is that when you are in doubt, use the more familiar words, the audience will understand them better. For example, you must use pay instead of remuneration and invoice instead of statement of payment. By using familiar words that, have, that you are comfortable with, your communication will be more, um, will seem less strained and your audience will be more comfortable with it as well. Uh, another example that I am going to show you now on the screen. Uh, unfamiliar words, so, uh, use, the use of unfamiliar words would be after a perusal of pertinent data, the conclusion is that a lucrative market exists for subject property. Now this is very difficult language, the words are unfamiliar to the writer, the writer has probably had to look at a dictionary to get a lot of these words out and they will undoubtedly be unfamiliar to the reader as well. The familiar words would be, the data we studied show that your property is profitable and in high demand. Now this is obviously something that is much easier for the readers to understand. Jitne mushkil alfaz istamal karenge, utni likhne wale ko bhi mushkil hogi, padhne wale ko bhi mushkil hogi. Isle better hai ke simple language istamal ki jai. Although it is appropriate to use technical terms and business jargon in some professional situations, avoid their use when the reader is not acquainted with the terminology. Bohat se technical language hoti hai, bohat se is tarang ki terminology of phrases hoti hai, jo hum 
सब्सटीट्यूट नहीं कर सकते जिनकी जगह हम दूसरे अल्फाज नहीं इस्तेमाल कर सकते क्योंकि उस सिचुएशन में वो ही इस्तेमाल हो सकते हैं फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल हम जब कंप्यूटर से रिलेटेड बातें करते हैं तो बहुत सी टर्म्स हैं जिनको हम सिंपल नहीं कर सकते वो उसी तरह इस्तेमाल होती हैं लेकिन अगर हमें ये पता है कि हमारी ऑडियंस कंप्यूटर से इतनी फेमिलियर नहीं है तो फिर बेहतर है कि उस उन लफ्ज़ों को किसी ना किसी तरह सिंप्लीफाई किया जाए क्योंकि उस ऑडियंस को शायद उन टेक्निकल टर्म्स का अंदाज़ा नहीं होगा कि उनका मतलब क्या है फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल एन अनफेमिलियर फ्रेज वुड बी असेस्ड वैल्यूएशन and a familiar phrase would be property value for tax purpose another unfamiliar phrase charge to your principal a familiar phrase for that would be increase the balance of your loan you also need to in when you're choosing precise concrete and familiar words you need to be uh, concise and with the increased use of email there is a tendency to be concise uh, the danger is that you must know the meaning of email acronyms which aid conciseness acronyms mean when they are words and we take their initials and make short words out of them for instance imo means in my opinion faq means frequently frequently asked questions etc so a lot of the times these are words that are used in email these are words that are also used in technical uh, emails so you need to be aware of what these acronyms actually mean we can also we also call them sometimes you call them abbreviations you also need to know how to construct effective sentences and paragraphs because uh, that that is what is at the core of clarity and important characteristics to consider are length unity coherence and emphasis let's have a look at length and what we mean when we say when we talk about length uh, an average sentence should be of 17 to 20 words when the sentence sentence length increases you should try to chop it down to two sentences this basically means that if you feel that your sentence is becoming much longer than 17 to 20 words then you need to use some kind of a divider to chop that sentence into two sentences ek lamba sentence kehne se behtar hai ki do chote sentences istemal kiye jaye also if the sentences are too short then the resulting language becomes overly simple and choppy इसी के बरक्स अगर हमारे जो सेंटेंसेस हैं या जुमले हैं वो बहुत ही शॉर्ट हैं तो फिर वो बहुत एब्रप्ट और बहुत टेंस कम्युनिकेशन लगती है तो इसलिए बेहतर है वहाँ बेहतर होता है कि उन सेंटेंसेस को और उन जुमलों को दो जुमलों की जगह एक लंबा जुमला हो लेकिन ये याद रहे कि वो जुमला जो है वो सेवनटीन से लेकर ट्वेंटी वर्ड से लंबा नहीं होना चाहिए इन अ सेंटेंस यूनिटी मीन्स डेट यू मस्ट हैव वन मेन आइडिया In case of other ideas, they must be closely related. For example, "I like Sohail" and "Eiffel Tower is in Paris" is obviously not a unified sentence. In a coherent sentence, the words are arranged so that the ideas clearly express express the intended meaning. Now, obviously, your uh, sentence will be coherent only if the meanings are clear and the ideas that you have in your sentence. are clear to the reader you need to place the correct modifier as close as possible to the word it is supposed to modify jo bhi ek lafz hai jiske jisko hum istemal kar rahe hain koi explanation dene ke liye wo hum jis cheez ki explanation de rahe hain us lafz ke kareeb tareen ho jumle ke andar taaki uska meaning zyada clear ho aur unme aapas mein relationship jo hai jo jumle ke alfaz ke darmiyan relationship hai wo zyada wazeh ho In the examples which follow you will notice that unclear sentences convey the wrong meaning. Let's have a look now at some examples where there is lack of co- coherence in the sentences. Let's have a look at another example. The unclear sentence says his report was about managers broken down by age and gender. Ab is jumle se lagta hai ki jo managers the wo breakdown ho gaye the. They were broken down. However, the clearer version would be his report his report focused on age and gender of managers it this shows that the report was broken down not the managers another unclear example is uh, in this slide after planting 10000 berry plants the deer came out into the botanist's farm and crushed them ab is jumle se ye lagta hai ki jo deer ne us hiran ne wo sare berry plants ko plant kiya tha the clearer sentence would be 
After our botanists had planted 10,000 berry plants, the deer came into the farm and crushed them. If we talk about emphasis, the quality that gives force to important parts of a sentence and paragraphs is emphasis. Now this is something that is very important for clarity. We need to have emphasis at the right places and on the right ideas within a sentence. Most often we need to put main ideas up front within a sentence. This means that the main idea of a sentence should be in the beginning of the sentence. Writers must, must decide what needs emphasis and then decide the correct sentence structure. When we have a sentence, we have the idea in a sentence, then as a writer we need to decide which section of the sentence needs to be given more emphasis and then decide on the sentence structure. A lot of the times we may write a sentence or we may think of a sentence and then we change the structure because we feel that the emphasis is at the wrong place. Let us have a look at some examples. A sentence with little emphasis, the airplane finally approached the speed of sound and it became very difficult to control. Now a better emphasis would be, as it approached the speed of sound, the airplane became very difficult to control. Ab is jumle mein hum is baat ko emphasize karna cha rahe hain ki wo jo aeroplane tha, wo speed of sound tak pahunch ke aaya. Uski speed itni ho gai jitni sound ki speed hoti hai. To is liye humne is fact ko jumle mein shuru mein rakha hai. Aur ye fact ke usko control karna difficult ho gaya, usko humne baad mein mention kiya hai. Similarly, uh, in another example it says, Candidates should be motivated and should have interest in dynamic and static testing of material and have those prerequisites and others. A better emphasis would be, prerequisites in candidates should include expertise in dynamic and static testing of material. Now in this, there is obviously more emphasis in the sentence and the sentence is shorter as well, so it makes it clearer to understand. Also, in addition to using the above methods of emphasis, the pieces of today allow different ways to visually add emphasis to words. When you are writing on a computer or typing in a computer, you can actually go into the grammar section of your computer and get different alternatives and different uh, ways in which to write the same sentence which would be grammatically correct and which would give better emphasis. Some of them include headings, tabulations, itemization, line charts, pie charts, italics, indentation, colored capitals or even a wide range of short margins. So apart from doing a grammar check and, and changing the emphasis within your sentence by changing the grammar, you can use all these aids within a computer as well. Now three sentences and I would like you to note them down, correct them for clarity and send them in as an assignment. Um, the first one is from an employee news bulletin and it says, remember next Friday's paper drive, bring your papers, put them in paper bags and tie them. The second sentence, during a job interview, the executive wants to hear what you can do in a few seconds. And the third sentence says, enclosed are your contracts on Gary Green in triplicate. You need to correct these sentences and uh, improve them so that they have more clarity in them. We are now going to look at some examples which have problems of length, unity, coherence and emphasis. And I would like you to consider these examples. They will be posted to you as an assignment and then you, need to, you will need to correct them for clarity. Now the first one says that it is from an employee news bulletin. The sentences are, remember next Friday's paper drive, bring your papers, put them in paper bags and tie them. This obviously has a problem, it could be of unity, it could be of length, you need to decide what it is. During a job interview, the executive wants to hear what you can do in a few seconds. You need to consider what is it that needs to be done in a few seconds. Does the executive want you to tell him what you can do in a few seconds or does the executive want you to tell him things in a few seconds? Few seconds mein wo ye cha raha hai ki aap kya kya kaam few seconds mein kar sakte hain ya wo ye few seconds mein ye cha raha hai ki aap un few seconds mein usko ye sari baatein bataye. Enclosed are your contracts on Gary Green in triplicate. Something wrong in this sentence. Think about what it is and then you can get back to me. Mr. Jones wished factory employees May 9 and lectured on destructive pest, pests. A large number were present. A large, a large number of what were present? A large number of factory employees were present or a large number of pests were present? 
Your memorial day speech will be followed by a firing squad. Now this sounds odd as well. Why will a firing squad be uh, following a memorial day speech? Advice in a newspaper's published recipe said, one should put a cup of liquid in the cavity of a turkey when roasting it. Does this sound right to you? Working in a grocery, several professors chat with him daily. Working in a grocery store, several pro professors chat with whom daily? There's obviously somebody, there is a pronoun or a name missing here and you need to decide where the, you should put that in. She wanted a policy for her house that cost $100,000 a year. What cost $100,000 a year? The policy or the house? Although working full-time on the outside job, Jim's grades remained good. Again, there is something definitely wrong in this sentence. Who was working outside? The grades or Jim? Thank you for your letter concerning the 10 pianos we received by airmail this morning. Now, in this one, is it the letter that was received by airmail or the pianos that were received by airmail? So the modifier is placed wrongly and you need to correct that. When only four years old, this customer's mother died. Who was four years old? The customer or the mother? As an experienced certified public accountant, I would like to ask your help with a problem my high school bookkeeping instructor assigned us to do. Now, who is a certified uh, public accountant? The person who is saying this or writing this or the person who is being asked to help? All the fauna exhibited a 100% mortality reaction. Who exhibited the reaction? The fauna? Now assume that you received a letter from a leading corporation and this letter was unclear to stockholders. You asked the chairperson that the letter needed simplification. The chairperson replied in the following piece of writing. Look at the writing. Is it clear? If not, why not? Let's read it together. Yours is the first criticism we have from the many thousands of stockholders who have already sent their proxies saying that the purpose of the meeting was not understandable to them. I do not see how I can state the facts more clearly and simple them, simple than was done in my letter of Jan January 16th. There's obviously something wrong with this letter and you need to decide what it is. You may rewrite this letter and send this back to us. Let's check now all that we talked about regarding clarity. You need to choose as precise or as concrete a word as possible. Select words that have high sense of appropriateness for the reader. Opt for familiar words, ones that are not pretentious. Limit the average sentence to 17 to 20 words. Insert no more than one main idea into a sentence. Arrange words so that the main idea occurs early in a sentence. And now we look at courtesy. True courtesy involves being aware not only of the uh, perspective of others, but also their feelings. We need to be considerate towards people. We need to be courteous towards people. We not only need to um, think how they would think, but we also need to keep their feelings in mind. Knowing your audience allows you to use statements of courtesy. Now, if you know your audience, then it's it's easier for you to use statements of courtesy and it makes it seems more natural when you're using statements of courtesy as well. You also need to be aware of your message receiver so that you can be courteous to them. Courtesy stems from a sincere you attitude. If you keep thinking of I or we, then it becomes uh, less easy to be courteous. But if you have the you attitude, then it's easier to be courteous. We talked about the you attitude in the previous lecture. It is not merely politeness with mechanical insertions of please and thank you, although applying socially accepted manners is a form of courtesy. Now, it's not only enough to just say please or thank you if your tone is rude or if the message is abrupt. Please, or th please and thank you are socially accepted norms. They are terms that are very important, but they're not the only terms that make courtesy. It is politeness that grows out of respect and concern for others that is also courtesy. Suggest suggestions on how to be courteous would be that you need to be sincerely tactful, thoughtful and appreciative. You need to use expressions that show respect and choose non-discriminatory expressions. Now talking about being sincere, sincerely tactful, thoughtful and appreciative. 
you need to use tact. Though very few people are intentionally abrupt or blunt, these negative traits are a common cause of discourtesy. Nobody wants to be abrupt consciously. Some people might want to be abrupt consciously, but I think when people are communicating in business, nobody really wants to be abrupt consciously. A lot of the times it comes uh, unconsciously or subconsciously, and we might not even be aware that we are being abrupt. So we need to be uh, very careful of that. Sometimes uh, these abrupt or blunt expressions stem from a mistaken idea of conciseness, sometimes from negative personal attitudes, etc. Now, a lot of the times when people are trying to be concise, they become abrupt or blunt, and that is something that we need to be careful about. Now, let's have some look at some examples of tactless and blunt uh, expressions. A tactless expression would be, stupid letter, I did not understand any of it. It would be more tactful to say, it's my understanding that this letter, etc., etc. Another tactless or blunt statement would be, Clearly, you did not read my latest facts. It would be more tactful to say, sometimes my wording is not precise. Let me try again. Tactlessly, you could say, I rewrote that letter three times. The point was clear. It would be more tactless to say, I am sorry the point was not clear. Here is another version. Coming to thoughtfulness and appreciation. These traits help build goodwill and you need to be generous in appreciating others' good performances. You need to show, use expressions that show respect. No reader wants to receive messages that offend them. Such expressions that show respect are grouped into two. In the first group, you need to omit using irritating expressions, and in the second, you need to omit using questionable humor. Questionable humor means humor that might not be humorous to all people. Har kisam ka mazak, har ek ko pasand nahi aata. इसलिए आपको केयरफुल होना रहे होना पड़ेगा कि आप जो मजाक कर रहे हैं वो उस सिचुएशन के लिए मौजूद है या नहीं है। Now talking of omitting irritating expressions, the following is a consensus list that includes a list of expressions that many people find irritating. Contrary to your inference, I do not agree with you. If you care, I am sure you must realize, etc. ये सारे एक्सप्रेशंस जो हैं ये आई थिंक हम सब अग्री करते हैं कि ये अगर हमें भी कोई कहे तो हमें इरिटेटिंग लगेंगे क्वेश्चनेबल ह्यूमर यू नीड टू व्हेन इन डाउट अबाउट द रेलेवेंस ऑफ योर ह्यूमर यू नीड टू लीव इट आउट इफ यू आर नॉट श्योर दैट योर ह्यूमर इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सेप्टेड वेल प्लीज डू नॉट यूज दोज जोक्स लाफ्टर टू वन पर्सन इज डिस्कस्ड फॉर अनदर ईच ऑफ अस हैज अ डिफरेंट सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमर सो प्लीज बी considerate of the uh, listener's sense of humor or the reader's sense of humor when you're communicating with them. Their sense of humor might not be the same as yours. Uh, and you, uh, let's have a look at an example where you need to look at the difference between the two notes. Note one is offensive. Hey man, what's this I hear about the good news? You sure pulled a fast one this past weekend and they did, then didn't tell any of us about it. Give my regards to the little lady and wish her the best. She'll need it. Now, this note is probably written from somebody who's very familiar with the other person, but it is still very, very abrupt. It, the person who's written it is, has been trying to be humorous, but it doesn't come across that way. It comes across as very abrupt and, in fact, in an irritating way as well. The more courteous note would be, Warm congratulations on your wedding. Well, you certainly took us by surprise. In fact, just a few of us suspected that you were taking off to get married. But even though we didn't hear about it until later, we wish you the best. Give our warm regards to the new partner. Now, this is obviously also to a friend, and it's it's also very casual. It is giving good uh, good wishes and uh, extending greetings, but it is much more courteous. It doesn't seem rude. You also need to, cho uh, to choose non-discriminatory expressions, expressions that do not discriminate against anyone. Kisi ek tapke ko, aise expressions hoon, jo kisi ek tapke ko alag na karein, ya kisi ek tapke ko chota ya nicha na dikhain. In order to be courteous, you need to avoid using discriminatory language. You should choose non-discriminatory expressions, like sexist terms, gender-specific singular pronouns, 
and you need to be careful when using names of men and women together. Coming to sexist terms, this basically means that when you're talking about males and females, you need to be careful in using terms that will show some kind of prejudice towards either sex. In communicating courteously, we need to be careful that we do not use discriminatory language. This means that you should use non-discriminatory expressions and avoid using sexist terms, gender specific singular pronouns and be careful when using the names of men and women together in terms of what names come first and how they are used. Let's have a look at some examples. First of all, when we talk of sexist terms, what do we actually mean when we say uh, sexist terms? You need to be careful about using the man word. For example, instead of saying chairman, you need to say chairperson because it can be equally used for a woman as for a man. In Western cultures than in others, this is a matter of more concern. In our society, somehow we are not always that conscious of using person instead of man, but we should be because we have more and more women now in the workplace and it's not always suitable to use man where uh, a woman is, um, uh, is being talked about. Therefore, you need to use alternative expressions that are neutral in gender. For example, it's questionable to use freshmen. It would be more desirable to use entering students or first year students since freshmen implies that it's only men who are in the first year. Uh, another example would be when we're using singular pronouns. Uh, English lacks a neuter, neutral pronoun signifying he or she. We only have either he or she if you're talking about a singular person. We don't have a neutral pronoun for uh, living being, beings. The trend to follow should be to avoid using he, his or him, etc. and use they or them. For example, it's questionable to say anyone who comes to class late will get his grade reduced. It's more desirable to say students who come to class late will get their grade reduced. It's also questionable to say each customer will have the new changes noted on his bill. And it's more desirable to say customers will have the new changes noted on their bill. This way, by avoiding the use of his, you're actually including men and women both in your communication. Uh, another example would be our criteria are firm. He is to be a scholar. He is to be a good teacher. Again, here we're talking only in terms of men and obviously it can be women as well who can be, who would be scholars. So it would be more desirable to say something like our criteria suggest that he or she should be a good scholar and a good teacher. Another one would be you guys should all be concerned about the issue. Guys obviously only refers to men. So it would be better to say both men and women, all of you should be concerned about the issue. Similarly, the executives may benefit from the stock options. He will, etc. It would be more desirable to say the executive may benefit from the stock op options. Each executive may, etc. Instead of specifying a gender for the executive. Each manager has an assigned parking space. He should park his car at the rear of the building. It would be better to say each manager has been assigned a parking space. Each car should be parked at the rear of the building. Now, when it comes to using names, when using names, treat each gender with respect. Use names in parallel forms. For example, it would be undesirable to say, if you're talking of a husband and wife, it would be undesirable to say Mudassar Ali and Sonia. It would also be undesirable to say Mrs. Ali and Mudassar because you're not giving them both equal respect or using them in parallel form. It would be more desirable to say, however, Mudassar and Sonia Ali because here then they look seem like a couple or Mr. and Mrs. Ali because in this way then you are treating them together and you're giving mutual respect to each person. Now we're going to look at some examples which have some element of discourtesy in the uh, ethics that uh, the communicator has used or that the communicator has. The examples might seem ethical to you at first glance, but if you look at the explanations uh, given in brackets, then you will know 
that obviously the there is no sincerity in the communication and I would like you to think about these and evaluate whether this in a business situation is actually the right thing to do. Uh, a manager said to a customer in writing or on the telephone, your request will be given our careful attention and we assure you that our intention is to be fair. Now this writer merely threw the case in the file folder and told his secretary to forget about it and that he had no intention of working on it. He hoped that after a long wait, the customer would forget that this uh, manager had promised him that the case would be looked at. I would like you to think, is this ethical communication, is this sincerity to your customer or to your client? Another case would be an advertisement where it was stated, nationwide three out of four people prefer this amazing new product. Now actually this product was not nationwide tested. It was not tested across the nation. It was only tested in a two or three states or two provinces of the nation. And the advertisement claimed that nationwide so many people preferred it. I would like you to think, is this ethically correct? Is this sincere to the clients, to the people who are reading the advertisement to promote your product in this way just so that you can sell it? Let's have a look quickly at a checklist which will tell you if you have been courteous in your uh, communication or not. Ask yourself, does the communication have a sincere you attitude? Have someone else have a look at your statement if you have doubts about whether it's tactful or not. Another opinion may cause you to reconsider making a statement. A lot of the times when we are making a statement, we might not uh, be very uh, conscious of what has gone wrong in that statement. So if you are writing, it's very easy to have somebody else have a look at it. This is an advantage that we have when we are uh, uh, doing written communication, that we can actually have other people read what we write, unlike when we speak. When we say, we can't always check someone before we say that we have to say this. ये ठीक बात है या नहीं है लेकिन जब हम लिखते हैं तो हम हमें जरूर किसी से चेक करा सकते हैं तो इसलिए बहुत बार बेहतर होगा कि हम किसी से चेक करा लें कि हमारी जो कम्युनिकेशन है ये टैक्टफुल है या नहीं है खास तौर पे जब हमें शुभा हो कि शायद हमने ज्यादा स्ट्रांग लैंग्वेज इस्तेमाल कर दी है या ज्यादा हमने हार्श लव्स इस्तेमाल कर दिए और शायद कर्टसी हमारी कम्युनिकेशन में कम हो गई हो इसलिए तब बेहतर है जरूर कि किसी को चेक करा लें कि जरा देख लें ये हम ज्यादा डिसकर्टियस तो नहीं हो गए यू एटीट्यूड से मुराद दूसरे इंसान का जो रीडर है उसके बारे में सोचना और उसकी फीलिंग्स को मद्दे नजर रखना। We've as we mentioned earlier in the previous lecture, it's important to have empathy with your reader. It's important to put yourself in the reader's shoes so that you can understand how the reader will feel when they read your communication. So if you keep that in mind, then your communication will always be courteous. If you feel that if how would I feel if I was reading this communication or if I was reading this letter or message? It's clear that we have to do what we have to do and we have to do what we have to do and we have to do what we have to do and we have to do what Having someone else have a look at your statement if you have doubts about whether it's tactful or not is very important. Another opinion may cause you to reconsider making a statement. It's very important that we have غصے میں یا جلد بازی میں کچھ کہہ دیتے ہیں کچھ لکھ دیتے ہیں اور پھر بعد میں ہم پشتاتے ہیں کہ کاش ہم نے ایسے نہ کہا ہوتا شاید ہم نے تھوڑی سٹرونگ لینگوج استعمال کر دی شاید ہم نے زیادہ ابرپلی کچھ کہہ دیا اس کے بہت بہتر ہوتا ہے کہ اگر ہمیں شک ہو کہ ہم ایسی کوئی بات کرنے جا رہے ہیں جو سننے والے کو یا پڑھنے والے کو کچھ تکلیف پہنچائے تو ہم ایک بار وہ کسی اور سے پڑھوا لیں ہو سکتا ہے ہمارا دوست ہمارا ساتھی ہمیں ایسا مشورہ دیں کہ ہم اس اپنی کمیونیکیشن کو تھوڑا سا ٹون ڈاؤن کر لیں تھوڑا سا کم ابرپٹ کر لیں تاکہ پڑھنے والے کو کم تکلیف ہو کیونکہ جو جو ہم میسج پہنچانا چاہ رہے ہیں ہم یہ بھی چاہ رہے ہیں کہ وہ رجسٹر ہو ہم یہ نہیں چاہ رہے کہ پڑھنے والے کو لگے کہ ہم انہیں ان کا احساس نہیں کیا اس لیے شاید ہمیں نہ لگے کہ ہم نے اسٹرانگ لینگویج استعمال کی ہے کوئی اور پڑھے تو اس کو لگے کہ یہ لینگویج زیادہ اسٹرانگ ہو گئی ہے تو اس لیے بہتر ہے کہ ہم مشورہ لے لیں اور ہمیں بلکہ رائٹنگ میں تو یہی ایک ایڈوانٹیج ہے کہ ہم اپنے ریٹن مٹیریل کو خود ایک سے زیادہ بار پڑھ سکتے ہیں اور کسی اور سے بھی پڑھوا سکتے ہیں اسپوکن مٹیریل میں اسپیچ میں بات کرنے میں یہ پرابلم ہوتی ہے کہ ہم کسی سے اپنی بات پہلے چیک نہیں کروا سکتے 
کوئی ہم ڈبیٹ کر رہے ہوں پھر تو ٹھیک ہے ہم نے پہلے پڑھ لیا پریکٹس کر لیا شیشے کے سامنے بول لیا دوستوں کے سامنے بول لیا لیکن عام عام کانورسیشن میں ہم کسی سے اپنی بات چیک نہیں کروا سکتے لیکن رائٹنگ میں تو ہمارے پاس یہ ایڈوانٹیج ہے تو اس لیے اس سے فائدہ اٹھانا چاہیے وی آلسو نیڈ ٹو بی کوشس ان یوزنگ ہیومر ان کمیونیکیشن ہیئر ٹو اٹ پیس ٹو ہیو سم ون ایلس ریویو یور ورڈس جب ہم کسی اور کو اپنی بات بتائیں دکھائیں کہ پلیز یہ چیک کر لیں ہم زیادہ زیادہ تو نہیں کہے گے زیادہ سختی سے تو بات نہیں کہے گے اسی طرح اگر ہم کوئی مذاق کر رہے ہیں یا تھوڑا سا ہیومر استعمال کر رہے ہیں اپنی کمیونیکیشن میں تو تب بھی بہت بہتر ہے کہ ہم کسی کو چیک کرا لیں ذرا دیکھ لیں کچھ ہم نے ذرا زیادہ ہی مذاق تو نہیں کر لیا پڑھنے والے کو یہ مذاق اچھا لگے گا بھی یا نہیں لگے گا یہ نہ ہو کہ دوسرا مائنڈ کر جائے یا دوسرے جو پڑھ رہا ہے اس کو یہ بات بری لگے You also need to be careful in using discriminatory language. We looked at that as well. And this means being aware of gender, race, age, color, creed, and religion, and ethnic background. Zahira, kisi ko bhi achha nahi lage ga ke agar kisi bhi kisam ki communication mein kisi ek tapke ko nicha dikhaya jaya ya kisi ek tapke ke baare mein is tarah baat ki jaya ke unke jazbaat ko thes pahunche. اس لیے بہتر ہے کہ جو بھی ہم کمیونیکیشن کریں ہم یہ چیز مد نظر رکھیں اور یہ دھیان میں رکھیں کہ ہم مرد حضرات اور خواتین کو ایکول رسپیکٹ دیں ہم ہر ریلیجن کو ہر ریس کو ہر ایتھنک بیک گراؤنڈ کے لوگوں کو ایکول رسپیکٹ دیں اور ان کے بارے میں جب بات بھی کریں تو اس طرح کریں کہ ان کے ان کے جذبات کو ہم مد نظر رکھیں سو ان دس لیسن وی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ کلیئرٹی اینڈ کرٹسی اینڈ اپ ٹل ناؤ وی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ six out of seven C's of communication. In the next lesson, we will look at correctness and move on from there. And with this, we come to the end of this lecture. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.